In this video, let's see how we can install HestiaCP on Ubuntu 22.04. If you're going to run your website, then make sure you do this. You follow all, this, all these processes because these are very important in securing your server. As soon as you get your server, make sure you follow the Ubuntu 22.04 initial server post and I will leave this link in the description. Down here, I want to go to here. I will click here on script generation. I want to generate the HSTCP script. While that is happening, I want to I want to restart my server. sudo reboot or you can also restart your server from this side. If you go into your instances, so this is on Valtra, you can restart your server. Server restarts. I will restart it from this end. Okay, so it has restarted. But first of all, let me go and generate our script. So let's generate our installation script. And if you have a small server, 2GB and below, I would suggest that you go with Nginx instead of Apache. So I will not install Apache. I will install PHP FPM and I can install multiple PHP versions because I don't know what I will be running. And for FTP, I will install pro FTP named yeah this is for DNS MySQL I don't install Postgres so I'll leave that out Exim I will definitely leave Exim installed Exim of course you need both Exim and Dovecot because this is for IMAP this is the one that works with the mail clients and this is the one that delivers the mail mail transfer protocol this is the one that will transfer the mail so you need both of them this I will not install that. Clamav, I will install that. Spam assassin, I'll leave that. IP tables, of course. Fail to burn. Definitely you need this. And then quota. No, I don't need that. I'm just going to leave it out. You can activate the HDSCP API. I will not activate it. Force, I want to force the installation. If there's any error, force the installation. Interactive, definitely ask me what I need. And then port, make sure you're using a Cloudflare port. So I'm going to choose 2053. Just go online and search for Cloudflare ports. And I will use port 2053. This way I will be able to use Cloudflare. There, there's a list of ports that is accepted on Cloudflare. Is accepted through the Cloudflare network. Go online and look for them. Host name, of course. When we were setting up the server, we, we did set up a host name. I will use a different website here. I will not use bizanota.com. Let me use bizanota.club. And I will change. I will change the host name again to match that. And I will use that as my host name. And email, admin email, set your set up your admin email there. I can just use bizanosa at gmail. What else? Password. Set up a password for your server. If you don't, you may need to set to reset the password. And you can reset it like this on Ubuntu or Debian. Password. Let me just write a password here. And let me let me save it somewhere. Language, English, with Debs, not really. And then after that, I'm just going to click on proceed. I will copy. I will copy that to run onto my server. So I need to log into the server. I know I'm definitely logged out because I restarted the server. So first, I will log into the server. You can see I'm logging in via the SSH key that we set up for our server. Control L to clear the screen. And then I will download the package for installing HDSCP. And then after we download that, let's copy this, the configurations that we want. So anyway, when I click on it, it copies. Okay. So let me come back. I will paste the script in there. Press enter. Enter my sudo password. And then this might take a while. So 
Let's just be patient and wait. It's going to install Nginx, multiple PHP environment. It's going to install different PHP versions. It's going to install the DNS server, exam for mail server, and then DevCode. This is for mail clients. And then MariaDB Pro FTP for the FTP server. And then it's going to install IP tables plus fail to burn. If that's what you want, you can enter. Why? Enter and let it install what it needs. So just give it some time. I will come back in case it asks me to do anything. I will come back and resume recording. All right, the installation is complete. If we scroll up, you're going to see it has installed different versions of PHP here. Okay, now the installation is complete. Just press any key to continue. And if you scroll up, you will find your admin details. Make sure that you copy this. So by default, the username will be admin, but the password will be what you set. Or if you forgot to set a password, you can easily set up a password as I've shown you here. Log into SSH and you want to set a password for admin. You'll set your password there. Copy that, copy, and then I will save it somewhere i will save it inside here paste and then i can come back and i can just press enter and when you press enter it's going to reboot your server so let's give it time to reboot and once it reboots we are going to log into stscp just to see what the panel looks like so i can log into my server once again but before i do that just consider donating to this project it's a good project stcp is a lightweight control panel that you can use to host your website for free for absolutely free so just go to this link and donate anything that you can to support the project we want the project to succeed as much as possible i'm going to do control l to clear the screen so i'm logging in with with an ssh key and I also changed the port. All these are in the Ubuntu 22.04 initial server setup post, which I've linked to. Okay, so I've logged into the server and you can see my memory usage has gone up because I've installed STR. I don't know what's eating up my memory. Let me have a look, control L and then I'll just do top. Okay, I'll do sudo top. So just press Q to get out of that and then I can do sudo top. When you do sudo top, it brings you all the processes and okay, that was just when it was starting up. That's why the memory usage was high, but you can see nothing is really taking much of my memory. Yeah, one thing that usually takes a lot of memory is uh, MySQL. MySQL databases, they usually take a lot of memory nginx not so much if you had apache you would have seen apache takes a lot of memory as well that's why i'm telling you if your vps is 2 gb and below just use nginx and php fpm so i'll press q to get out of this and then i'll just clear the screen with Control l now let's go and log into our panel so i will copy the ip plus the port so use the port that you chose if you choose a different port use that port there so I'll copy that. So it tells you that there's a warning, potential risk ahead, and that is because you cannot add DNS records for the IP so that you can make this a public uh, SSL certificate. But what you can do is you can just click on advanced and then click on accept risk and continue. Username is admin, next. And then I will take the password from here, copy, paste, login. So there is your control panel. Just a quick overview. I just want to do a quick, a quick overview. We'll do more things. But for now, I will just come in here and show you what you have. This is where your website will be. If you want to create a new website, you'll just come in here under web and click on add web but you, you need to create a new account before you can use you can add a website make sure that you go into users 
and then you add a new user and the new user should be the user that you'll be using to create the websites don't use the admin user to create your websites for security sake use a different user the dns records will be there i'll show you how you can set up dns and that's the next video that i think i should do how to set up dns but before i do that i'm going to do smaller videos just to make sure that uh, i cover certain things about this control panel now dns we'll look at that mail you can set up cron jobs your backups will be in there and then you can come in here if you're logged in as admin you can come in here under settings and here you'll find different things that you can do you can look at all the services that are running if any service is not running you can just click on it and you can restart it and if you want to edit any configuration files you can do so by going there or you can come here i think it's under configure you can come in here and you can configure different things for your web server for your database you want to set up the configuration files uh, you can choose to disable certain php versions for me i don't want to use any of this so i'm going to disable them but just in case you have a certain application that requires a specific php version you can come in here and enable it i'm going to save and this usually takes a while so just give it time to deactivate all the php versions there there we go after a while so just wait a while and all the changes will be made it will deactivate all these php versions so if you want to set up anything here under updates you can enable email notifications when an update is done on your server basic options just come in here change the time zone to match where you are i'm in nairobi city i will choose nairobi there and appearance you can change from dark theme whichever you want to change there you can change you can change your entire control panel okay so i prefer the dark theme so i'm going to come back and i will use the dark theme save you can also do this for users if different users want different themes they can do that when they go to their user profile they can change the theme there as well databases you get the idea if you want to change anything here you can change that let's go to php uh we're back to php i know you'll need to change certain things if you need to edit php you'll just come in here click let me open in a new tab and then you can see that you can change various php configuration settings you can change that there or you can go to the advanced option and you can change that for your php so you can see this is going to change in these files so you can change the different things that you want to change for your php you can increase the memory limit there let's go back let's come back here what else nginx maybe you want to edit certain things about nginx you can increase the send out time you can increase the time out time all that you can in, you can change here for nginx if you want to make any other settings you want to add any configurations you can add those inside inside here and then you you save and then you'll save and then it will restart nginx what else let's go back Let's come back here and you can look at the task man task monitor the task monitor will just show you the tasks that are currently running and how much load they are consuming so you can see right now i don't really have much because my server is brand new but you can always come back here after a while to see how your server is doing if there are any spikes you can investigate on your server to see what's happening you can also view the advanced details of this just to look at the at the processes that are running this is what uh, we looked at in the dashboard you can use to the top back you can look at the firewall so when you come to settings you can change the various firewall settings here and as i was saying if you listen to me in the ubuntu server setup i told you that these control panels will set up your firewall for you because they need certain tasks to be running so that's what's happening here they've added the ports that they need including my port for stcp so one thing uh, that you should always do if you're paranoid 
should always log into your server and disable the SSH port and FTP port as well. If you need to log in, you can just come in and enable it again. So to, to suspend it, you can just click there and that will suspend FTP. So people won't be able to access your server via STP, FTP. You can also do the same for SSH. So this means that if you want to access your server, you're going to have to come into your HTTP and then dis enable the ports that you've disabled. If you disable anything, yeah, of course don't disable this because for you to disable this, you have to log into SSH to enable it. You can, uh, you can add any rules here. If you want to add a rule, maybe you want to allow a new port, you can allow a new port. Port, um, maybe you want to allow port 3000 up to port 34, 34, 3400. And then the IP list. Uh, you can use, I should have copied it from the other end, but you can use 00 if you want to allow it. So you can block or allow. Let's say we want to allow this port. Optional. So I know it's probably not going to save because I don't have that. Yeah. IP address cannot be blank. So let's use for all, all traffic. So we'll save that, and if we go back, we'll see that we've allowed, we've, did we block or allow? Okay, we allowed, yeah, we've allowed this port. If you want to suspend it, you don't need it. You can delete it, or you can suspend it, or you can delete it. I will delete this. So that's pretty much it there. You can manage banned IPs. If any IPs have been banned, you can, can come in here and disable the banned IPs. Or you can add an IP to your ban list and ban the IP. So you can ban an IP from accessing your SSH or whichever service you don't want to be accessed. So let's go back. So what else? Backups. I think I'm going to do a video of how to bring in your backup, how to import your backup into SDSCP. I will do that video later on. So what else is here that is important? Okay, the file man the file manager. I know people want to see the file manager. So I will click on the file manager. And with the file manager, you can upload and download different files into and out of your server, out of the different websites. So right now we don't have many websites, but if you go under web, this is where your websites will be in STRCP. And if you go there, we can upload different files and the files for your website will be inside of public HTML. So if you come here, you can select everything and then zip them up. Maybe you're backing up your server and you can create that and maybe you want to download that. You can come in here and download the backup for, for your website. That's how to use the file manager. You can even edit files in here. You can edit files, you can change different things, you can change the code for your files. I will click there to save and if you want to edit anything, just click on it, edit it and then save it. If you need to create a file inside here, you can click on plus and then add a file or you can add a folder. So maybe You'll add a folder and then inside of this folder you can create your files create and if you need to upload anything inside here you can click on add file you can upload that in there or you can just drag in a file even if you drag in a file it should be saved i can just upload that for the sake of it And you can see it has been added. So you can just drag in files. You can go back home. And if you want to go back to your control panel, all you have to do is just click here. And you can also look at the root of your file. If you want to look at the, the tree for your files, you can click here to look at the tree for your file. And you can go into any file that you want to go to. 
right so that is the file manager for HTACP. i'm just going to exit back into the control panel we've said you can create a new user let's go here and see the settings that we have for the user so you can edit your user settings here you can change your email you can change your password and if you don't want to allow user to log into the control panel, you can do that. You, you can create new users who can add websites. Maybe you're hosting for your friends, family, or even hosting for people that pay. You can come in here and disable disable them from logging into, into the control panel. And then this is very important. As soon as you get your you log into your server, make sure you enable two factor authentication. So to enable this, just check that how to enable. We're going to see in the next video how to do some of these things. So I'm just going to show you in the next video how to enable two-factor authentication. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Before I end, you can also change the appearance. You want a different view for your user, then you can change that there. So you can see HDCP is a very easy to use, lightweight control panel. And as I said, feel free to donate to this panel because it is a very reliable panel. You can use it to host your websites on production, not just testing websites, but production websites you can host using HTACP. So I think this is enough to get you excited about using Hestia. Control panel, very easy to use. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new user and then we're going to see how to create two-factor authentication for the new user. This has been a video for how to install HTACP and a brief overview of the HTACP control panel. See you in the next one. The next thing, let us see how to create a new user. And then for the new user, we are going to set up two-factor authentication. So I'll just go back here into users. Make sure you're logged in as the admin user. And you can click there to add user, admin to, because I want it to be easy to remember. I'll just call, I'll just give it a name of sys admin. And then the email. Of course, give it a password. Oh, I can't generate a password. So let me just use the same password I used for admin. So just know by the time you're watching this video, I will have deleted this server. So I will put all that there. The password must have at least. So the password is weak. Okay. The password is weak. So what we can do, we can make this capital. And I'll just come back. And save it. Do not allow a user. Of course, you want the user to log in. And then once we save it, we're going to see how we can set up to factor authentication can email the login credentials if you're creating this for someone else then you can email the credentials to them so that they can have their credentials like passwords to log into the server and then i will make this an administrator not a user if you're creating uh, an account for someone so that they can just add a website make sure you give them the user role in my case i'll make this an administrator and then i'm going to save so we've created the user I can log in as the admin. Since I'm root, I can just come in here as a user. And if I go to admin, if I just click on admin or I click on that, I can log in as admin. Just by clicking on that, I can log in as admin. And I can go to admin, admin2, I mean, admin2. I can log in as admin2. And then I can set up two factor authentication for admin two. So just click there on to set up two factor authentication for admin two. Just click there or any user, just click there on enable two factor authentication and then click save. And then make sure you already have the authenticator app installed on your phone. So for me, I do. I'm just going to go to Google Authenticator app and then I'm going to scan. I'm going to click on the plus button and scan. So I'm going to scan this and as soon as I scan it, it will be added to my Google Authenticator login list. As soon as I do that, I don't really have to do anything else. I can just click save and Google Authentication to factor authentication will now be set up. And make sure you save your account recovery. 
so that if you lose your phone, you can use this to log in. Make sure you copy this and you save it somewhere. Let's look at advanced options for your user. Setting up no login. This way they will not log into they will not log into SSH. But if you want them to log in, you can just give them bash and they will be able to log in. PHP version, the default version you want for them, you can put that. So when they create a website, the PHP version will always default to that. And then of course you can add the DNS. I'm going to show you how to set up DNS on HTTP. I haven't done any DNS up to this point with this website. This is a real website. This is a real domain, but I haven't added any DNS settings for anything. So nothing will be accessible. But I'm going to show you how you can set up DNS for HTTP. And I'm going to show you two methods. The first method, I'm going to show you how you can use your own domain if you want to use your own domain. The second method, I'm going to show you how to use Cloudflare, which is the easier route. So I should probably start with that. If you want to, if you're not going to host websites for people, then you should just use Cloudflare to handle your DNS and don't bother with using your own website as your DNS records for your DNS records. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm going to do both in one video. So the video might be long, but you'll just bear with me. That's the next thing we're going to do. So if you do have any questions, feel very free to let me know. Let's see how to set up DNS for Hestia CP. I'm going to show you two methods for setting up Hestia DNS. The first one, we're going to see how we can use Cloudflare to set up DNS on your Hestia CP panel. And then the second one, we're going to see how you can use your own domain as your DNS provider. So we'll have our name servers will be something like ns1.bizanosa.club or ns2.bizanosa.club. But first of all, let's see how we can do it using Cloudflare. So you'll come here under Cloudflare. Now, if you want to add a website, I've already added this and this is the one we want to use. So if you want to add a website, just come in here, click add a website, I'll add example.com. Cannot be added, but what if we add example? Ooh, that should be added. So it's not a registered domain. Let's find one that is registered. Now I can just use, I know this one is registered, so I'm just going to click there. Unfortunately, this I think is already added here. Uh, let's find another one. Let's try to add this, even though it's already added on Cloudflare. You'll choose a plan. We are going to go with the free plan. Click there on get started with the free plan. It's going to scan your DNS and it will give you the name servers to add. So I don't want to go any further with this because this website is working. I can just go, let me just click to go back. And I can click on it again. I will see that I have this. So when you click continue, you'll get uh, the cloud flare name server so you'll find the name servers that you're currently using and then you can replace them with the name servers that you've been given so copy those name servers and put them on your domain provider in this case if you're on namecheap just go to namecheap domain list domain list then go to change the name servers and you can use a custom dns like i'm doing here and i will go back to the other website let me delete this website here remove site from Cloudflare. I will go back to this. This is already connected to Cloudflare. Now that it's already connected, all you have to do is you have to come here under DNS. This is all you have to do to get your website to be working with your HTTP and your control panel. All you have to do is come in here under DNS and then you add the A record, CNAME record, if you want to make your work even easier, the one thing that we did in the beginning was we installed the DNS provider for HTTP, the DNS, the named service, which is the DNS provider for HTTP. That is the application that would handle DNS. So what you'll need to do is come in here and add the website. And when you add it, let's say we add it and you take that IP address, of course create a dns zone make sure you check this create dns zone and what this will do is that it's going to generate the records that you need and those records just copy them and put them on cloudflare 
and your website will be up and running. So like in this case, let me just continue. So you can enable mail for this server. In my case, I won't really enable mail. I will save. I can enable mail later on. This is not the end. I can come back later on and enable mail. Right now the website is on STSCP, but if we go to it, we won't be able to access it because we've not added the DNS records for this. If I want to set up the DNS records, I'll just come in. I will just come in here under DNS and I will go to Bizanosa Club and you can see all the DNS records have been generated here for me. So all I have to do is to just copy this over onto Cloudflare. So there's no way to import. Is there a way to import? No, there's no way to import this. But let's just click there to edit. You can edit the different records. Let's come back. Now, the most important ones that you want to start with to make sure that to make sure that you can issue out SSL is the A record for the main domain and the A record for WW. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into Cloudflare, just copy your IP address, copy, and then come back into Cloudflare. And then we will add an A record, add A record. So this already has an A record. I don't know where this goes to. I don't think this one really exists. This must be another tutorial I did. So I'm just going to paste in the other IP address there and save. And what's going to happen is that Cloudflare is going to propagate this. And after a while, you're going to find that your server now points to your HTTP server. So this might take a while. Sometimes it might take 10 minutes. Sometimes it might even, it might even take 24 hours. It depends on where you are. And the good thing with Cloudflare is that Cloudflare is pretty fast. So the propagation is going to happen fast. You can see in my case, I used a CNAME, but you can also use an A record for WW. So if you want to set up SSL, you will go, you will have to have WW and the main domain set up. So you don't have to use A record for WW. Like in my case here, you can see it is a CNAME, but the point is that if anyone goes to WW, there will be something there to find because it says that it is a CNAME of this, which is also an alias of that. So a CNAME is just an alias. So you can use WW with an A record, just create another A record and then add WW and then add the IP address or you can just do it like this, like I did with a CNAME, it doesn't really matter. And then copy all these other records because they are important like that will be for mail and then SMTP, all this, just copy them one at a time you can go the other side and then you can add all this. You can see all these are A records. So if you come in here and you click on add a record, you can see you can add all the different records. Let's choose one as an example. Uh, let's say we want to add txt. No, let's add one of these A records and I'll just choose FTP. So if I come here and I choose FTP, this is A record, right? So this is where you put your subdomain, FTP or whatever. This is WW mail. So you can put all this. These are all subdomains, okay? So all these subdomains, FTP. And then you'll add your IP address there. I will add that. Let's do another example. Mail. Let's just create one for mail. This one is important. This one you must have. So you're going to add record and then you're going to it's still an A record, so we're just going to add mail, mail, and then paste, and then save. So if you come here, add record, we don't have any MX, oh yeah, we do have an MX here. And the MX goes to mail.bizanosa.com, make sure you take the dot at the end, that's also important. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to create an MX record. MX and the MX record was MX record is just the domain name. So at simply means the domain name. So it's going to replace the at with your domain name. And the mail server will just add in that as our mail server. And uh, what is the TTT? The time to life on this side is 14400. The time to life on the other end is 1400. How many? Is that one hour? Uh, I mean TTL here. Priority. Priority. We'll just leave that at 10. I think it's 10, right? Priority, you can just leave it at default. 
So time to life. If you come here, you can even put an hour, okay? But an hour is too short. So let's just put it at one day. Or if you don't know what to do, just leave it at auto and Cloudflare will choose for you. Even that one, the priority was the priority on this end. Priority has been put to zero. So you can leave it at zero and then just save. So that's pretty much it for how to use Cloudflare to handle your DNS. So that's the first part. Now, once you've added these records, just sit back and wait. And when you go to your domain, and when you visit your domain at some point, you're going to see that it propagates to your server. And that's what you want. So that's just how to use Cloudflare. So right now it's not ready. Give it time to propagate. And once it propagates, when people go to bizanosa.club, they're going to see your HTTP. If you already have a website, you can add a website, but just wait for everything to propagate before you start adding your website. But if you want to move your website without going offline, this is the right time to add your website. Right now, when it's propagating, just bring in your website files, attach it to the database, make sure that everything is working well. And when the website propagates, finally, your website is going to be shown there. And you just have to wait for it to propagate. The one way that I can test whether it has propagated is I can come in here back to web and I can try to issue SSL. So if I click on it, it will give me the option to edit it and I can try to enable SSL and I will use Let's Encrypt SSL. So if Let's Encrypt uh, works perfectly, it means that my website has, has propagated even though I may not be able to see it if I go to my browser. So let's save and see if it's going to issue SSL successfully. So you can see this error. Let's encrypt validation status 400. This means that your, your DNS records have not propagated. So just give it time, okay? You give it time to propagate. Most importantly, you must, you must have the main domain with an A record and WW must be pointing somewhere for SSL to be issued using Let's Encrypt. Add all the other records that you need to add to make sure that your website is working with Cloudflare. Your HTTP is working with Cloudflare. Now the next one is how to set up your own DNS records. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to actually create the parent records. So what you need to do is go to your domain provider. In this case, I'm using Namecheap. I've never used Namecheap for this. I do have a video playlist that has some older videos that I did with a different provider. Go to those videos. I'll put the link in the description. You can watch how to do the same thing on a different domain name provider. So your domain name provider will have a place whereby you can create child name servers, personal name servers, private name servers. These are just the same things. On Namecheap, at least you'll come here under advanced DNS. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that Mine is not showing me any other thing. If you're using MailChimp, if you're using Namecheap, yours may be showing you something here and that's because you're using a different name server setting under domain. My name servers are pointing to, are pointing to Cloudflare, so I will not get the DNS zone here. But something is here. We can register a name server and this is what you want. So I'm just going to click there on add name server. You can choose a name server to add. Let's just add NS1 and we need our IP address. I will copy my IP address and then I will come back into Namecheap and I will paste that in there. And then I'll click done. And that's the first one. Name server successfully added. Let's add another one. One thing that you probably should do is if you're going to host for other people, you need to add another IP to your server so that you can have the different name servers pointing to different IPs. So I'm going to add there NS2. I will paste and then I will click done. So if I click there on search, let me choose custom and let's go back to standard name servers. And I'm going to click there to add my IP address. I will add the IP address again. I don't know why I did not register. Fail to update. Please make sure all the fields are filled in correctly. So I'll just delete these two once again. And I've deleted both of them. And I will try 
the process again. Let's just start. Add name server. I will choose NS1 and then I will add the IP address. Done. Name server added successfully. Let's just confirm if it's been added. I will click there on search. And then I will add the second name server. NS2. I will use the same IP. Maybe the problem is using the same IP. Let's see. And then I will search standard. Okay, so you can see they've been added. This is what you want. Now the next step is for you to go to your domain provider. And on your domain provider, in this case, I'm using Namecheap. I'm just going to come here under domains. And you need to change your name servers to point to the name servers that you've created. So I'm going to paste the NS1 as my custom domain. Make sure you choose custom domain. And then I'm going to add the second name server. And I will save this. So we need to come here under DNS and we need to add two records here. I need to add I need to add an A record. I don't know that it's added. Let's just confirm before I do it. I don't see NS1 added. Oh yeah, we already have NS added here. So we don't need to do this again. It's already added here. NS1.bizanosa.club and NS2.bizanosa.club. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but you need to you need to confirm the propagation for this. We need to come here and let's just see if anywhere this is now propagating based on our name servers. So remember right now Cloudflare, right now Hestia is the one handling our DNS, not Cloudflare. If you want Cloudflare to handle your DNS, you'll come back here and then change your name servers to the ones for Cloudflare. So let's go to MX Toolbox. I want to see if my name servers have already propagated. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. DNS lookup. We need to do a DNS lookup. Paste. Bizanosa.club. Let's see who's handling our DNS right now. Okay. So right now it's still being handled via Cloudflare. So let's give it some time and we'll see what happens. Let's go into our server and we're we going to create two A records, one for NS1 and NS2. So I will come in here and I will go into DNS and I will add, I, I want to go into this to edit this and I need to add a record for NS1 and NS2 and I want to add A records for this. So do this on your HTCP panel. Record is NS1. Type A record IP. Let's choose our IP. Let's add our IP. Priority. We'll just leave this as this as they are. So I'm just going to save. That's for Okay, I must have added a space here. Remove the space, make sure there are no spaces. And then save. And then you add the second one, NS2. NS2, A record, IP, the same IP address. Make sure you remove the spaces if there are any. And then I'm going to save. So we have our records, A records for NS1, NS1, NS2. Let me take the link and see if there is any kind of propagation that has happened. Paste and go. Okay, that's good. The website is working. That means that there is one DNS record that's working. It could be Cloudflare. Or it could be HTTP, but let's confirm using MX Toolbox. So if I go to mxtoolbox.com, I'm going to go to not MX Lookup, but I will go to DNS Lookup. 
let's just see if it's bringing back our IP address. And perfect, you can see it is bringing up our IP address. That is good. So now you can use your own, you can use your own domain as your name servers. Now it's bringing the constant company. The constant company is Valtra and our server is being host, hosted on Valtra. So the IP belongs to Valtra. That's what you're being told here. And this is good because now we know that our DNS is being provided by STSCP and that's what we wanted. Let's see if all these are working. Where's WW? If you go to WW and it's working, then it means that everything is working fine. And at this point, you can issue an SSL. Perfect. What this means is that now if you go to our domain, we can issue SSL. So we can go back to our domain and issue SSL and it's going to be successful. So let's just go and edit. And I will click on enable. SSL for this domain, I will use Let's Encrypt and I will save. So just give it time. SSL has been issued. Okay, perfect. Now if we go to the front end and we reload, in fact, it automatically redirects to SSL and you can see who's issued our SSL is verified by Let's Encrypt. This is how you can handle your DNS using HTACP. I've shown you two ways. You can use Cloudflare or you can use your own domain. So there's a playlist that I have for handling DNS and you can find that. I will add this video in that playlist as well. And that way you can see the different domain providers that I used. I used a different provider in the previous videos. You can see if that's the same as the current provider that you're using or you can just follow what I've done. The basic thing that you need to understand is that name servers that you create on the domain provider, you'll find them called private name servers, personal name servers or child name servers. Those are the important things. So you'll create the, you'll create the NS1, then you add the IP address or you can even make it NS10, NS12 and add your IP address for them and then you go back to your Hestia control panel and you add NS1 with an A record with your IP address and then NS2 with an A record with your IP address and that's going to fix everything for you. So before I end the video, let's just search for check name servers. So Let's look at that NS lookup. Do these guys have NS lookup? I don't see it here. Enter domain, paste, and then show NS records. We want to see the NS records that are being used. And the result for bizanosa.com is NS is using bizanosa.com, is using NS1 and NS2. You've confirmed it. You don't have to be skeptical. You've confirmed NS lookup using the NS lookup that you're currently using your own personal name servers. So I hope this video will help you, uh, will help you to achieve whichever DNS goal you have in mind. If you want to use your own server for DNS, you can do that. If you want to use Cloudflare, you've seen how you can do that as well. You have seen how you can set, how you can set up DNS on HTACP and we used Cloudflare and you also used, you saw how you can do it with your domain name. We're going to stick with the domain name for now because that is a setup that we have. If you check the DNS, you'll see that our DNS are currently our domain name. So if you followed all the steps, then yours is also working perfectly. The next thing, let's see how we can install WordPress on our website. We've already set up SSL as well. If you go to the front end, you can see we've set up SSL. Our website is Let's Encrypt ready. So we're going to install WordPress and there is a way to install WordPress. If you come here under websites, if you go into your web, let's just go back. If you come here into the website where you want to install WordPress, you can click on quick install app and this will install any of this. We want to install WordPress. Site name 
WordPress sample WordPress account username. I'll just call it WP admin, but don't use this. Use something that is more secure than that. WordPress account email. I will use this email can be used to recover your password if you forget your login info. WordPress account password. Let's generate a password. I'll just copy it and put it here. Install directory. If you want to install WordPress in a directory, you can add a directory here. Okay, if you don't want it to be installed on public HTML on the root folder like it will be, then you can add a directory. And once you do that, there are certain things that you'll need to do. For instance, you'll need to go into your index uh, HTML, into your index.php, and you need to add the directory for where you installed WordPress. I don't know that it's going to automatically do it for you, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it at default. Language, of course, English, database create, database name, you can create database, okay, to, it will be created automatically, or you can use a specific database name, then database password you can generate and create. And later on, I'll show you how you can access this database once you've created them. So let's just click on install to use the default settings. I hope there won't be any problems now that we've chosen the default settings. WordPress app was installed successfully. Really? That was very fast. Anyway, let's just go to the front end and see. And it has been installed indeed. I will log in with the username and password. Make sure you save them. To log into WordPress, just go to wp-admin. I will use the password that I copied, paste, remember me, and then I will log in. So now that we are logged in, let's create a post, add new, STSCP is the best. Then let's make this a heading. You can add a button. Link has to I think that is there. STRCP website. Is it STR.com? HTTPS. Let us just confirm this. Best and go. All right. That is a website. <laughs> I didn't want to mess that up. So I'm just going to open in a new tab. And let's publish our beautiful blog post. Publish. Let's go and view our post. Okay, so this is what I wanted. You can see our, what's this called? Our permalink is not permalink. We need pretty permalinks. So I will go back into the dashboard. I will come into settings. Where is it? Is it under reading settings? No, it's under permalinks. It's under permalinks. The permalink settings are under permalinks. I will choose post name and then I will save. I want pretty permalinks so let's just refresh we are going to get a 404 we are not going to we are not getting a 404 we are being redirected that is fantastic this website is running on nginx and php fpm we are not using apache we are using nginx and php fpm using stcp so you can see how easy this is if you're a freelancer and you need to host multiple websites for your clients if this is like a service you offer yeah, i will build your website and host it for you you can use HTACP to do that. You can see how easy it is to install a new website and you can just start designing the website for them. Let's say you want to add a second website and the second website we're going to add, I'm not going to add a, a full domain, but the process of adding a website is just the same. 
I'm going to add a subdomain for this because I don't want to go into any of my domains and change the name servers. That is the only reason, the only reason I'm going to use a subdomain. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to come back here and I will go into web and let's add another website. So to add a second website is as easy as click on add web domain. So the web domain I want to add is a subdomain. Let's add shop.bizanosa.club. If you're adding a second domain, you can add it like this and all the records will be added for you. So I will create DNS zone and I will save. And as soon as I do that, let's see if the website has been added since we are using our own. Okay. What did I click on? What did I click on? I'm supposed to, okay. Instead of taking me here, Let's go back to web. I want to go to the front. I want to visit the public site. So let me click on that. Let's see if everything has been set up. You can see since we are using our own name servers, it has been set up. However, on Cloudflare, if you are using Cloudflare, you'd need to go back to Cloudflare and add and add the record for this. And to add the record for this is pretty easy. Let me just show you because I I think I'm still logged into Cloudflare. So I'll just go into Cloudflare. Once you go into the website, go into DNS and we need to add all the records for this. Let's go into DNS and let's see the records that have been set up for shop.bizanosa.club. Since this has been set up here, some of these are the same as the one for are the same as the one for the main domain which is bizanosa.club. The only thing that is not the same is www we need to add this and then we also need to add the a record. We also need to add the A record for it. I'm going to come into Cloudflare. Let me copy the IP address. I need the IP address. Copy. So if you want the website to show up online, you're going to come in here under add record and you'll add an A record and the name will be the subdomain, which is shop. And then you'll add the IP address there and you'll save. And then, most importantly, you need to add www as well. So you can add www as an A record or as a CNAME, but I'm going to add it as an A record this time round, and I'm going to add it as www dot shop. www dot shop, and then we're going to paste. And as soon as you paste, you're going to save. So these two, uh, this and this, are for our subdomain. So if you are using Cloudflare, right now if somebody goes to shop and www, the website will show up because they're being directed correctly. Now you can add the other records. This MX records, you'd need to add MX and then the TXT records as well. If it is different, no, I don't think it's different since we're using the IP, the, this will not be different. You need to add this as well. I think this is for SPF. And then DMARC, add these ones as well, these TXT records. Now to add the TXT records, You'll just copy the entirety, copy, and then you'll come back here and add a txt record, t txt, and you add the value there. That is the value that you got from there. And then you need the record itself, copy. Now this is important for mail delivery. If your email is going into spam, make sure you see how to add DMARC for your domain, and then you can save. So since my domain, my HTTP is handling all the DNS records, I don't need to worry about any of that. As soon as I set up this website and I click on add DNS zone, all that will be dealt with by HTTP. So for me, the next thing that I, I want to do is install WordPress again, because this video is about installing multiple websites on your Hestia panel. So we already have that WordPress. Let's install WordPress here again. I'll just click there to edit or you can click on the name. I'll click on quick install and I will choose WordPress. You can install any of these others. Generate the password for me. Account email. Always add a working email because this is what you'll use to, to get your login information if you forget it. Then install directory. Just install it in the root directory. Everything else I will leave as default and then I'm just going to click there on install.
Oh, something I should have done is I should have enabled SSL, but it doesn't matter. We can do that next. WordPress has been installed. Let's go back just to confirm. We'll go to the front end to make sure that WordPress has been installed. And you can see our WordPress is not SSL active. So we're going to go back and we need to edit it. Let's edit it so that we can set up SSL. I'm just going to go into enable SSL for this domain and we're going to use Let's Encrypt and then I'm going to save. There we go. Now SSL is set up. Let's go back to the site and see if this will reflect in the front end. And we don't even need to do anything. It will automatically redirect it to the SSL version. Now the issue that we still have on this end is we need to make this uh, we need to make this pretty link friendly. So let's log into our front end to our back end. WP admin login. Our two WordPress are running on HTTP. If you need to add another one, you know how to do it by now. Just click there, add a website, add the domain. If you have one IP on your server, choose the IP, create DNS zone. And since you're using your HTTP for the for the DNS, then you don't need to do much. You All you need to do is this. You can also enable mail. If you're on Valtra, I'm doing this tutorial on Valtra. If you're on Valtra, then you'd need to contact Valtra and tell them to open up port 25, or you can go online and figure out how to change SMT port, SMTP port from port 25 to a different port. Let's go back. The objective for this course, for this tutorial, for this video has been achieved. You wanted to see how to install multiple WordPress on your Hestia. You've seen how to do it. So let's continue with another thing. And in the next setup, I'm going to back up this and then we can go back into our SSH to see how we can how we can import this into our server. How we can import our backup into a server. Let's see how we can import Hestia CP backup into our new server. Maybe you have an old server, you're moving to a new server. Let's see how you can import your HTTP backup via SSH. I've already written the post and you can just follow along with the post. If you go to Google, you can search for SSH. HTTP import SSH, HTTP import via SSH. And this is a post, bizanosa.com, HTTP restore backup via SSH. This is a post and we're going to follow this post. So first of all, we need to go in and download the backup. So log into your HTTP and for the user that you want the backup for, then go into that user. I'm just going to go into admin2. That is the user that you created. So you can see inside here we have two. We have two websites for this fella and these websites are actually live. So if we go, we should be able to visit this website. So you can see right now the websites are live and you saw how to install these websites. So the next thing is we want to we want to go into backup for this user and download our backup. You can see that you only have one backup, but if you want multiple backups for this user, maybe you want to store many backups, you can go back into the admin user, log in as the admin user for your server, and then here under admin you'll see packages. The package that is being used by the other user is the default package. So I will edit this. And if I come down here under backups, I can increase the number of backups that will be stored for this user. Now let's say I want four backups. And I will just save. And now if I go back to users and I go into admin2, you'll see that now this fella has four backups. So I'm just going to click there on backups because I need to download the backup. You can create a backup if you want to. You can also add backup exclusions. Maybe you don't want certain files to be added into your backups. So if you click there to edit the exclusion, you can add a domain. Maybe there's a domain you don't want to backup. There are mail domains you don't want to backup. Databases, type the full database name. All right, you can do that there. But let's go back here into backup and let's download this. You can download it by coming here. You can restore the backup right there. 
but we don't want to restore it from there we want to see how we can restore it via ssh so the first thing i'm going to download the backup so the download is complete and i'm on windows you can follow along whether you're on windows mac or linux it's going to work for you regardless of the platform that you're using so i'm going to open up my home directory because i want to move this into my home directory and here let me see which directory i can put it in let me put it here yeah that's empty so i'll just put it inside there my backup file so if you're on windows download git and then install git and then open git bash because that's what you're going to use if you don't use git bash you can use any other linux environment for windows but i'm using git bash we've downloaded the backup let me just delete it now i don't need it we're going to see it being imported via ssh just to confirm that we've actually imported things we're going to delete everything that is inside here i'll just delete them one at a time delete with the selected i can just delete them from here delete so you can see we don't have anything let's see if there's anything that we have that we can remove dns let's go and remove all this dns we're going to re-import everything back for this user databases delete this as well anything else all right that's all we need to do for this user now you can see this user doesn't have anything we're going to import everything back so if you come back into this post the first thing we've done is we've downloaded our backup i'm going to use scp to send this file into into the backups folder now on linux on stscp they store their backups inside there so if we go inside of that directory we can do ls Is it backups or backup? Okay, it's backup. If you go in here, you'll see that we do have a backup for admin and we do have a log files as well. So this is where Hestia stores their backup file. We need to change the permission for that directory just temporarily because we need to we need to bring things into that directory. And we're going to change the permissions temporarily and then after that we'll change them back right now the permissions are at 755 and that is not going to allow us to bring anything into that into that directory so i'm going to change it to this temporarily the permission has been changed the next thing we need to upload our file into that directory now you can do this any way that you like to you can use scp i'm going to use scp but you can also use ftp if you want to use ftp you can do the same so probably if you're using ftp you'll find that you may not be able to access that backup file via your ftp client but what you can do is you can just move it into any directory and then just use the move command to move it from that directory into the backup directory where it needs to be i hope you understand what i mean use ftp to move it anywhere onto your server and then move it into the backup directory so when you're using the scp command you're going to use scp which is secure copy to copy files from my computer into my server this is going to be our destination this is going to be our destination we're going to move it from the local pc into the server so this part you'll do this on your local computer so there are two options here example one if you're not using ssh i'm assuming that you followed my ubuntu 22.04 initial server setup if you did not then this is a part for you so you're going to scp and then this is the location for your file that you've just downloaded and make sure it is now the reason i moved it into my home directory was because i wanted to use this this will save me time on windows i don't have to do anything else once i do this the system will know that this is my home directory this is a link to my, my home directory you'll see how i do that and then you can scp that is a file you need to upload and then you're uploading it to your server into which location into this location okay so that's how you use scp of course i'm not going to use this because in my server i changed my port and i also use an ssh key let me copy this because this is the one we're going to use to copy the file into our server so i'm going to copy this and i want to edit it so i 
just paste it in here. SCP port as a search, I need to change the location. It was inside of BAP. And also let me copy the name. So let me just show you. Control C. If I take this and I put it, I put it here. Now this is the same as that. That's why I decided to put it inside of my home directory. So I'm going to I'm going to copy it here. This is a this is a location for where the file is. And then I will copy the name. And I will replace that there. That is a path. So this entire thing is the same as that is the same as that. So if you're on Windows, just move it to your home directory. Even on Linux, you can get to your home directory this way. So the new user, what's my IP? I need to get my IP. That's my IP address. The IP for my server. I will put that there. Paste. And I think that's all the details that I need to change. Just note that the dash P is capital in this case. When you're logging via SSH, usually it's a small P. So I will come here, paste, enter, yes, enter. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I've messed up. I've messed up. Okay, this is supposed to be done on my local computer. Let me open this here. I'm supposed to do this on my local machine. So I'm going to paste that there. Do it on your local computer, not on the server. Enter. And I will log into my server. Enter. So just give it time to copy. There we go. The file has been copied. Now, if we go back to our server, we can do ls and we're going to see the file is there. ls. I think I already did that command here. Yeah, you can see the file has been added for admin too. So this is the one that we want to use to restore our backup. But before we even do anything, let's change the permission for this file, for this folder back to 755. So we need to change it back to 755 so that this do not have the permissions to write, execute and read. The next step is to restore the backup. We've changed the permissions. Now let's just restore the backup. Now to restore the backup, you're going to use this on Ubuntu. You have to add all this. Just add this. If you don't add this and you only use that, it's not going to work. So this restore user, and then that is the username that you're restoring for. And then this is a file that we are restoring. Now, if the username, you want a different username, maybe you want to use a different username here, change the username there and also change the username on the file there. The first bit of it, make sure you do that if you want to change the username. Now, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to copy that only. And the rest we are going to get here. We are going to restore We're going to restore admin2. Two. Admin2. Two. If you want a different name, give a different name there. If you want a new user to be created with a different name, give the different name. And then we are going to paste that file name and press enter. Just give it time to do what it's doing. 
it's going to restore everything that you need. So it's restoring the web files and then the DNS. There is no mail to restore. If you didn't want to back up any of this, you would have chosen them to be left out of the backup. And you saw how you can do that. Let me go back to my server. I'm going to refresh to see that all the backup is back. And as soon as I refresh, you'll see that our backup is back. Our database is back. Our DNS records are back. Our web is back as well. So that is how you can move from one server to another if you're migrating your STSCP server. So just note that with SCP, you don't really have to download the backup. What you can actually do here, SCP, this, uh, if you are already on your server, you just need to add the login details for the new server there. Those are the login details. In my case, I'm using an SSH key. And this is the source file. When you're already on your server, all you need to do is you just need to come in here, copy and change the location for where the file is, which in this case, if it is currently on your current server, it will be there. So if you are migrating from one HTTP server to another, in the server where you have HTTP installed and you have the backup, just do that. And you won't have to download the backup. All right. So that's how you can migrate your HTTP. Just come here. All the steps are here for you to follow. Very few steps. That's it. Let us see how you can work with your database on HTTP. Specifically, how you can check your WordPress install database. If you installed WordPress using the one-click install on HTTP, you're going to see how you can access that database. So let's go into DB and just do a general overview of the HTTP database. So if you come here, you're going to find all the databases that you've created. And if you so forget, if you happen to forget a password for a database, all you have to do is you just have to click on it and then you set a new password. And if it is already connected to an application, make sure you take the new password and add that as a new configuration detail. That is that. If you forget the password, you can come, you can come in here and change. You can even change the username. You can see this is a username that Hestia automatically set up for me. So you can come there. That is a username. Make sure that when you're using your username with your applications, you copy them from there. Let's go back. If you create a new database, let's say you create a new database and we just call this, we'll call this database sample. Our database name will be admin2 sample. That is the DB name. And then the type, we only have MySQL. If you, if you had Postgres installed, you'd see Postgres as well. Username, we'll use sample again. We'll copy the password, copy the username I mean. So of course, label them so that you can know which is which. And the password, set up a password. So the password, just copy that and save it somewhere too. But just remember, if you forget the password, you can always come back and reset it. Just change it here and then save. So if this database was being created for someone who is being hosted on your server, or you want to remember these details, you can just enter your email address and they will be sent to you. All these credentials will be sent in your, into your email address. Advanced option, let's see what we have here. You can change the host. Right now, we only have the local host on our machine. We don't have any uh, database being hosted externally. And of course, character. You can choose character here, but UTF-8 UTF is a standard, so just use that. I'm going to save. And the database has been created, so if we come back here, we are going to see our new database has been added there, admin sample. So if you want to access this on the PHP My Admin, just click there, PHP My Admin. And since we are accessing it on the IP, we're going to get this risk because we cannot add our IP onto any DNS records. We're going to accept this. And we're going to log in 
what you need to do is if you want to access your php my admin what you should do is you need to access it through a domain name you shouldn't access it through an ip so that can be easily fixed you can just go back here let's go back into the admin user and the admin user has our website's host name this is our website's host name host name and i don't know if this is already accessible this should already be accessible since we are using HTTP. since we are using HTTP as as our domain dns provider this should be accessible okay so you can see that this is not accessible but that's probably because we haven't set up the dns records for this let's see do we have a dns zone for this is i will go back and i'm just going to delete this website and i will set it up again copy i will delete it you can set it up as the admin user but let's go and set it up with the other user that we've been using to set up the different websites on our hestia panel so i'm going to come here under web add the web domain paste create dns zone and then we're going to save that and now before we even do that let us go back into the domain itself just click there and we want to enable ssl and let's use let's encrypt save so everything is working seamlessly for me seamlessly for me because i am using hdscp for my dns records as i showed you in one of the previous videos i showed you how you can set up dns so once we do that if we come here we should be able to visit this website okay so i just give it time to propagate well and everything is going to work so let's try to log in into that domain copy we're going to log into this domain we're going to log in through this domain accept risk and continue now if we go into our databases for this user and we go into db let's try and open php my admin and this time round php my admin will work because it is not being accessed via an ip so let's try and log into one of the databases so if maybe you want to import a database for one of these you just copy the credentials that was the database name i don't need that i do need the user admin user username paste and then the password there is a password and then login and once you do that you can now import your database into your server okay and if you want to access wordpress installs databases for your wordpress install you can go into your wordpress files and find out the login credentials so let me come in here and where is my file manager i will go inside of web and let's say we want to access the database for this domain i will go into public html and i will go looking for wp config and while you're here you might as well delete this delete the wp sample let's open this now database settings we need database name we don't need that database user we need the database user to log into our maybe you want to import a database for that wordpress or you want to change something on the on the db i will sign out of phpMyAdmin. 
I will paste and I will come back and the database password, that is our password. Copy. Paste. Login. Now you see why it's important for you to make sure that your server is secure because once somebody gets access, they can just log into the different platforms that you are hosting. So you can see, maybe you want to change the options. Site URL, you want to change any options, you can change that there. Blog name. So let's just change this for, for the sake and we're going to see if it's, if it's affecting the front end. Let's go into web visit the website and you can see it is changing our front end that's how you can work with your HTTP database you can create the databases you can get their credentials and you can use php my admin to access your database make sure when you're accessing php my admin you're not using your ip because your ip is not allowed to access php my admin you have to access it through a domain that is connected so you can log into your HTTP using any domain that is connected to it and when i was installing hestia i told you to change the port to something that is cloudflare acceptable that's why i'm using 2053 now the good thing with 2053 is that if you're hosting your website here and maybe you're hosting for other people and they decide to use cloudflare they can still access your front they can still access stcp using port 2053 the default port of hestia is not accepted by cloudflare so you need to change the port when you're installing it like i did so if I go to port 2053, I should be able to log in. There you go. You can log in any website that you're hosting here. You can log into your HTTP from the back end. So that's it for this tutorial. I don't know if there's anything else that we need to cover here. Everything else I believe you can manage to cover on your own and learn on your own. That's pretty much it. One thing I've not looked at is mail. In the next video, let's do that one last thing before we say goodbye to this HTTP tutorial. Before wrapping up this tutorial, let's talk briefly about mail. I did install the mail server and everything that I need for mail to run on my server, I installed it. Now the only issue you may experience is that most of these cloud providers will disable port 25. That is a SMTP port. That is a port that sends mail. You can receive mail, but you won't be able to send it if their port is blocked. If your port is blocked and you absolutely need to use port 25, just contact them and tell them that you want to use it because you're running a business and you need to send mail. Something like that, they would allow you to, to send mail, but if you're, if you're being fishy and they think you're going to spam people, they may not allow you. What you can do is you can go online and find out how you can change the port, SMTP port. Find out how you can change it online and change it. Let's come here under mail and you can see I don't have any mail yet. And the reason for that is because when I was setting up my websites, I did not, I did not enable mail. So let me use this as an example. And the good thing is that all these websites that I've set up are using the DNS provider from HTTP. So everything will work seamlessly. You don't even have to change any DNS settings. That is one of the advantages of using HTTP for your DNS. But if you're running a small website, just use Cloudflare. Now let's see if there's a place where I can add the mail options enable that custom document so i don't have mail there i cannot add mail let's go here and see if we can add mail so i can add a mail domain even though i didn't add it there i can add a mail domain a mail domain will add all the details you need to send mail and for me the mail domain that i want to add is this so let me copy that add the domain spam filter what do you want to use as your mail client so i think i only installed round cube that's why it's the only one being shown there spam filter reject spam antivirus of course you need to enable dkim smtp relay if you're going to send mail using third-party providers like aws ses or you're going to use any other third-party smt provider add the settings here and when you add the settings you'll just need to add your host port username and password that you get from the other side let's say you're using amazon ses you're going to get the details from them you can add all the details right there 
we're not going to use an SMTP relay, we're going to use our own DNS, our own server here. I will just click on save. Once we add it, we are able to add the email addresses for this. If you want to add email addresses for that, let's just click on it. And when you click on it, you can add you can add mail, a mail account. You can also edit the mail domain. Let's see what you can edit. You can change all the things here. So you can add a catch-all email. This is one where when people spam you, they're just assuming that you have a certain email. Maybe you have info and you don't have info at your domain.com. You can create an account that catches all that kind of nonsense. And then let's go back. Let's click on this again and we're just going to add a mail account. Mail account account. Let's say we want to add Ricky. Ricky at Bizanosa Club. So username. Then you need to add a password. Copy this somewhere because I don't want, I don't want to forget it. Add advanced options. What options can we have? You can add a quota. Maybe you're hosting this for somebody else. If you're hosting for somebody else, you can add a quota and say you cannot use more than 100 MB. You can add domain aliases and you can add forward too. If you want to forward this somewhere, you can add the forwarding too. And you can choose not to store forwarded mail. You want to limit spamming, you can say you cannot send more than five emails per hour. Email login credentials to whoever you are creating the account for. So when you're done with all these settings, just click on save. So if you go back to mail, let's just click there to go back. Right now we have Ricky at Bizanosa Club. So if you go into that email, you can edit anything that you need to edit there. Where is round cube? How do I access round cube? Let's try bizanosa.club slash webmail. Let's see if this is going to take us to round cube. So this is not. How do I access round cube? Let us go back. Let's see how we can access. Okay, there we go. If you want to access webmail, you have to go back to the domain and you can access Roundcube from there. So add your domain. My domain is Ricky at this. Copy. Ricky at that and then the password we did save our password here. Copy, paste, I'm logged in. So let's say I want to send a mail to somebody. You click there on compose. I will send mail to, let's send to this Gmail so that we can see if, if it will go into spam. Let us send. It ended up in spam. The DNS settings for. Have we added the DNS settings? For DKIM, mail domain is there. But just figure out how you can avoid going into the spam folder on Hestia CP or Vesta CP. So if you don't get any results through Hesta, look for Vesta CP. You're going to get some advice on how you can set up your server so that your mail doesn't end up in spam. I was able to send mail. So if you're not able to send mail, just go to your provider, tell them to open up the port or you can change the port. And also, if you don't want to end up in spam, the easiest fix is just to use an SMTP provider. When you are setting up the mail domain, this domain, you saw that there was a place for you to add your SM SMTP relay. So if you want, you can go create an account. So look into using an SMTP relay if you don't want to end up in spam. You, in fact, this is a better thing to do because you don't have to worry about your mail server ever. Once you do that, your mail will end up into the folder, into the right folder. But you can also set up your mail such that it doesn't end up in the spam folder. Just 
increase your reputation as a sender and also do not spam people try not to spam people and most importantly you need to figure out which settings in the dns area here you need to set up mx toolbox mx toolbox does it have a tool for just seeing if you'll end up in spam let us look at this mx this will just give us a lookup we don't need the lookup i think it's this email health so we can dmac found dmac policy not enabled okay so you can enable that dmac maybe this is the issue but that should not be that big a deal let's look at email health and see if there's anything they can advise us to improve so we can see that we are not in any blacklist so maybe the issues or oh, so name servers are on the same subnet so yeah this this could be an issue this could definitely be an issue reverse dns does not contain the host name all right that right there could be our problem let's go back into our server and since I'm on Vultra, this is very easy to fix. Let me just look for, let me see what is my host name. And that's my host name. So I will copy my host name and I will take that into uh, my Vultra dashboard into the server where my, is, where my HTACP is installed. And if I come here under settings, so let's just start from, from the beginning. So I will go inside of the server and then I will come here under settings. And then where is it? There. So you can see this is not the same. This is different. So I need to come in here. And I will change this. Paste. Enter. This should this should take some time. But it won't take that long. Let me just Google reverse DNS lookup. Our DNS lookup. Does MX Toolbox have one? Yeah, let me use the one for MX Toolbox. It won't take too long. I oh, know I actually need to look for, I need to add my IP address. So check if your IP address is connected to, is connected to the host name. Reverse lookup. And you can see, okay, now it is connected. Okay, now it's connected. Let's confirm if this will help solve our mail delivery problem. It still ended up in spam you can see mail reverse does not match smtp banner now this is the last thing we are doing and then we are giving up <laughs> no i'm just kidding anyway come to mailtester.com let us test our mail server so i'm going to copy the email that they give me i will go back into my round cube i will compose an email and send it there paste Test. And then we'll send. If I come back to mailtester.com, I can check the score for my for my mail server. And then we're going to see what they recommend and fix those. So you're not fully authenticated. This seems your message could be improved. Ah, that was a test message, so it doesn't matter. This is where the problem seems to be. Let's see what is the issue here. Your, let's look at this one, which seems to be bad. We checked a record. There's no a record. Okay. Oh yeah, this is a problem. Where is this coming from? We're using dot club. And here we are seeing dot com. Where is dot com coming from? Let's go to our DNS record and see if we have anything here to do with .com. So if you go to the DNS records for bizanosa.club, we can see we have the PTR record is .club, .club, .club. There's no .com anywhere. So what this means is that maybe there's an issue on my host name. So let's come back. And I did a video about how you can change your host name. So make sure you watch that. So... I'll just confirm my hostname again. 
and you can see my host name is dot club that is good now the next thing let's see in the hosts file if everything is okay in the hosts file so in the hosts file we'll go to let's just do cut so in the hosts file okay you can see this is where the problem seems to be so i can just fix this quickly I've just done cut right now. Yeah, I, this is the one I'm looking for. So let's do sudo. And I'm going to use nano to edit it. Enter. Now you can see I did not change the hostname. And I think even Hestia probably tried to change the hostname, but it couldn't because of this. And if you did watch the video about changing server hostnames, then you saw that in some cloud providers, they use a template. So let's go to the template and change our host name. So the template is there. We're just going to change it here. So basically the host the host name is like the DNS for your server. So that is this is the alias. Let me remove the alias. And I will replace the alias and then this is your actual host name. Is there anything else here? I don't think there's anything else. So let me just close this and reboot the server. Control X y enter sudo reboot give it time to start up before we try to log in again and all right everything seems to have to have been changed so let's go and do this test again i don't know let's try mx toolbox again i don't know if mx toolbox is going to have better results for us let's look at email health email health so you can see that has fixed our issue it was just the hosts the issue with the hosts on our server so that's very important if you want to fix the issue then you just need to go to your host name change the host name appropriately and then once you change the host name you go and you change that as well in the etsy hosts file that's important so i hope that at least has given you a good day making sure that you've solved that one issue that was a pain. Now let's go back to tester and we're going to do one last test before we say goodbye to this HTCP tutorial. So I will come back here and I want to compose a new email. Compose and I will use that email here. Let's test. send and then once we send i will come here check my score and everything seems to be okay now and the issue was just the host name make sure you change your host name i did a video about that and that's usually very important in mail you're probably going to end up in spam if you don't change your host name now i will come back uh, and send one to gmail and if it doesn't end up in the inbox folder of Gmail, just know that the issue is not your server. The issue is that you're probably a new domain or your IP address is still not trusted. After a while, once you send mail, you will be trusted. Subject. Send. And after 
doing that, it has still gone into the spam folder. But this is probably just because my server is new and my IP is not trusted. So once you send a couple of emails and people receive them and open them, then you will you will be able to go into the inbox folder. It also depends if your domain is not known, that could could also be an issue and it could also be an issue with my with my message. So my message doesn't seem to be anything uh, of value. That's why it's probably been sent to spam. I hope this has helped you to learn how you can work with HTTP mail. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.